Tu peux éteindre le, le truc, le micro -ondes. Hey, this is Malika of Evanston Live TV, and we have with us a very special guest, Indona Mumbaye. Mumbaye. Mumbai, Mumbai. I, I was real, I was like, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I just heard. Were you just speaking beautiful French? Just yes. Now? Yes. <laughs> Telling my husband to turn off the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love to hear you speak French. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to bring you on today, Indoorbi, because uh, you you've started a page called Our Village, the Black Evanstonian. And um, it's pretty much, you pretty much set it up for those who, you know, have been in Evanston for generations, like people who've gotten some serious roots here in Evanston. And then you also open it up to newcomers of, of Evanston. So give us a little bit about what the, the Black Evanstonian is all about. Okay, well, <clears throat> You know, like you stated, that we're looking for people to join the group that are historically Black Evanstonian families, minimum at least three generations. Now, I'm a fifth generation Evanstonian. My children are sixth generation. Um, but for those that do not have that lineage, we require you to be someone who has positively contributed to our community, whether it's through community activism, education, or business ownership. Okay. And um, I mean, I've gone to your page and it's been, you know, informative. You all talk about, yeah, the, the lineage of people, Evans, Black Evanston. Um, I've seen it where it gets, you know, uh, controversial. You all have <laughs> Ron, Ronnie Wilson as part of your page, which, you know, he can, uh, you know, kind of be in your face. <laughs> Anybody that knows Lonnie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes having very valid points, but you know, sometimes the delivery is a little rough. Mm -hmm. um, but you all seem very passionate about your mission and your vision. What What is the vision for where you all want to take this page? So the vision where we want to take this page is, you know, <clears throat> my family has been here since at least the, eight, the end of the 1800s. Mm -hmm. uh, Lonnie's family has been here also for a very long time. So we have that generational tie. You know, our families have known each other for many, many years. And what we're trying to do is trying to bring back, bring back to Evanston what, the way that it used to be. You know, you had people of different uh, socioeconomic levels. You know, you had those that moved here because they were working for white families as like maids and and uh, nannies and porters and such. But then you also had professionals, you know, such as doctors, lawyers, um, dentists, and there were also business owners. Like my family in particular had moved up here from South Carolina, from Abbeville, South Carolina and Greenville, South Carolina. And my great grandfather, when he first came here, they already had relatives here but they weren't yet as established as my great-grandfather when he came here. So when he came, he was equipped to purchase land and also to uh, build his own house. And he actually was the first person to purchase land on what's now the dead end of Darrow. And at that time, he also had, he was a blacksmith, but he also had farm animals and horses and um, during down season, he like he would do horse rides with the children and hay rides and such. And he, being, having that entrepreneurial spirit, he encouraged his sons to do the same. Like my great grandmother, she never had to work. She basically was a housewife and she took care of her children. She was very active in the church. She was a member of Second Baptist Church. And from my understanding, my great grandfather really didn't like the Baptist church because you had to be dunked in water to be baptized. <laughs> and he wasn't for that. But we want to bring it back to the way that it used to be. Um, even though people may not have come from families such as my own, and they may have come from families where their relatives um, didn't own their own home and were renting rooms 
or were working for white families, there was still a certain um, sense of dignity and pride that Black Evanstonians had back then. They all worked together to help each other. And even those that maybe when they first arrived weren't capable of purchasing properties, they were able to rent from other um, Black Evanstonians who did own homes and they were able to rent out rooms and eventually save up their money to be able to buy their own home and be able to start their own businesses. There was a time in Evanston where, you know, of course, due to segregation, there was, um, you know, Black Evanstonians had their own businesses and they frequented their own businesses. They frequented the Black Y. They frequented the Black-owned restaurants and, you know, the Black-owned cab companies. There's Robinson Bus Company owned by a historically Black Evanstonian family. So there were a lot of, um, I remember even my doctor growing up was a Black doctor. He's still around, Dr. Carl Hill. He's still over on Dodge. Um, also, there was another Dr. Hill who started the, the Black Hospital. You know, so there was a sense of pride in the community and people all worked together. But I can say that there was definitely a breakdown of that going into the 80s and on into the 90s. But, you know, traditionally, Black Evanstonians were known for being very close-knit and working hard together across economic lines and regardless of education level. What do you think that breakdown was? What, what happened in the 80s and 90s that, because I remember speaking to uh, the late great Lorraine Morton and um, mm -hmm. she invited me over and um, sat in her, her, uh, her living room area and she said, Malika, you know, Black people, we had everything. She was like, they did. our own schools, our own hospital, our own everything. She said, we were just a thriving part of Evanston. And she Absolutely. Said, and then they just they got rid of the school. She was like, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were thinking. She said, and we have not recovered since. So what do you think happened in the 80s and the 90s? Well, to be honest with you, yes, um, the, you know, the closing of foster school did, it did play a big role in the eventual demise. Mm -hmm. um, but then also there was an issue of drug abuse in the 80s and 90s that did cause a huge shift, you know, where you did have um, some families who may have inherited property from their parents that um, due to drug addiction, they ended up losing properties losing their parents' businesses. And let's that was great. The drug addictions. Yes. Who poured, who poured the drugs into the Black community? Let's, let's, let's start there. <laughs> well, you know, just like it happened all throughout the United States, the U.S. government did. You know, yes, they did. They, you know, there were some drug lords that were making tons of money, but how many African Americans were traveling overseas to import drugs? I think what was there? There was like one, maybe. But who was who was um, securing those drugs? Who was providing the aircrafts? Who was providing the um, the uh, the guns? The and everything's right. 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 Mm -hmm. It was all government funded. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, issues that they assumed would only remain in the inner cities, of course, eventually trickled out into the suburbs. And that's one of the issues that took place here in Evanston. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I believe Black Evanston definitely has the leadership and the passion, the drive and the fire to rebuild Black Evanston. Um, but I have to say that that there is like a, a new generation that seems to be more of a me first, more of a every man for himself. So how do how do you intend, how does your group intend to um, bring the Black community like together? Well, we're all on one page and, and mm -hmm. you know, like you have your group that's really about the collective and everybody working together and having the same vision. And then you have another group over here that's like, well, as soon as a white person writes me a check, y'all on your own, you know, is every man for mm -hmm. himself. 
So it's a lot of that in, in black yes. medicine, a lot of it. <laughs> yes. So they will abandon a black agenda in a heartbeat and turn on somebody in a heartbeat. As soon so as how do we like bring those, everybody together for one vision? Like what, what is you all's plan for that? So um, what we've been doing is we've been reaching out to historic Evanstonian, black Evanstonian families. And luckily because my family has been here so long, they pretty much know everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated high school in 94 and I lived in New York City for many years. I moved back and I lived in Canada and then I moved back here in 2018. So coming back here in 2018 and being confronted by this totally new Evanston, um, not only young black Evanstonians who are not connected to the community, but then also a whole new influx of white Evanstonians that come from God knows where that are very divisive and very hateful. And I do believe that some of the money that's being given, you know, to certain black Evanstonians to, pre to basically prevent them from moving forward with helping our community is done on purpose to prevent that cohesion that used to exist before. And the way that we are working against that is by making sure that not only people of my generation, Gen X are involved, but also the seniors, also millennials. Um, we have, excuse me, we have a senior citizen by the name of Ms. Maud Wagner. She's 90 years old. She is going to be in charge of reaching out to, you know, the senior community. Then we also have uh, a young man by the name of Nico Ross, who is the son of um, Kimberly Ross Holmes, Kimberly Holmes Ross, who is the daughter of former um, older woman, Mrs. Dolores Holmes. So he being not only a child of the fifth ward, but also, you know, that generational tie to Evanston, but he's also very active in the community you know, as far as activism is concerned, trying to get young people involved in not only politics, but also their daily well-being. So we are definitely reaching out to different generations to get everyone involved in the conversation and in the action. That is awesome. So, um, so I know it's you, it's Lonnie. I mean, you all have some strong, strong voices. Oh, I don't, I didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I know it's you and Lonnie Wilson and um, yeah, and some of the other leaders that you mentioned, you all have some, you know, some, some voices in the community. Yes. So what's, what's next on your, on the, on you all's agenda? What's the, what's the first thing you all are tackling, I should say? So as part of the criteria, um, Basically, the, the three focuses of the reparations group, um, well, the reparations subcommittee in Evanston is to focus on housing, education, and economic development. So we've pretty much modeled ourselves after what it is that they, are, that they want to focus on. But in, a, in addition to the housing, education, and economic development, we also will be focusing on recreation, social services and history and the reason why we're doing that is because there are a number of issues that ail our community yes home own, yes home ownership is highly important yes education and economic development is highly important but so is our history so is um the issue of social services and recreation. Because if you take a look at the issues that we have in Evanston as far as the academic achievement gap is concerned, a lot of that has to do with the lack of um, relevant history in our schools for our children. So there's been an ongoing battle to try and attack the academic achievement gap. And millions of dollars have been spent over a number of years, but nothing has changed. So, you know, us being Black Evanstonians, knowing the history behind that, knowing the personal issues that affect our children, knowing that part of that has to do with the lack of self-knowledge and being taught constantly 
that you're the descendant, that you're only the descendant of a slave and you, you only gain certain rights after the civil rights movement, it makes them believe that other than that, they're nothing. So we're focusing highly on the education, on the history portion of education, so that we can help our children to better understand who they are. So I know that the first conversation that was had most recently um, regarding reparations, how it was around housing, which we're going to tackle as well, but we're going to do it in a manner that best suits our community. You know, we don't want to go around, go um, the, the traditional route. We've come up with a solution that will best suit the needs of our community. Okay, well, yeah, you know, I'm anxious to hear more about that. You know, I um, have been working on a legislation, a piece of legislation with uh, House Representative LaShawn Ford in regards to teaching the correct history of Black people to all of our children, not just Black children, but to all children, because mm -hmm. I think it is very important that all children know the role that Black people play from the beginning of the history book to the end of the history book, not just the greatness that we come from. Not just two paragraphs in the middle somewhere, you know, where you take us from slavery to cotton gin, Martin <laughs> Luther King, and then that's that's, and that's it. it. You know, our children it. need to learn about, you know, individuals such as Mansa Musa, the yes, wealthiest yes. man in history. They our need to learn that Egyptian history is African history. You know, unfortunately, the West tries to differentiate Egypt from Africa. It's on the continent of Africa. Correct. And all, the, all of the first dynasties of Egypt were Black African um, Egyptians. Yes, there were people that invaded after the fact, but we were the ones that started it, and we were the ones that built the first grand uh, pyramids. You know, mm -hmm. so much we created mathematics, science, Right. Astronomy, architecture, science, architecture. all, it, all, it, all it. the continent of Africa. Well, I, I'm, I, I know you all are going to support the bill. H B four nine five four. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. They'll be getting back to the capital, so we're determined to make that piece a reality. And so it'd be great if you guys could get behind that. That piece. We most definitely it. will, because and it's. Because just like you said, not only black children need to know all who we are, all children need to know. Because that also will stop the disrespect. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Um, when I had uh, written the amendment that I was like, this will help with race relations completely, totally. Absolutely. Once they know what our contributions have been and still are today. Right. But if we on. just take the timeline and show mm -hmm. what we were doing at a specific time in history and what was taking place in the West at the same time in history, there's no comparison. And the fact that our history has been downplayed for so long is, is completely unjust. Well, and Donna, um, I know you and I both have to get going to our next meetings, but um, please let people know where they can follow you and Lonnie on the group page and what's next. I know you guys got some meetings coming up. So just let them know right quick, like where they can find you. Cause I think it's awesome what, what you all are doing. So on Facebook, we have a private Facebook group, which is titled our Evanstonian, no, our village, the black Evanstonian. And it's a, it's a group that can easily be found by just typing in the search bar, our village, the black Evanstonian. And there are just a few, uh, questions that must be answered in order to be accepted into the group and you know we share knowledge daily and we will be having our first group meeting this coming Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right well thank you so much for coming on and sharing what you all are doing. I'm sure I'm going to have you back on because you all have some great ideas and some voices that just need to be heard whether people agree or not. I think your hearts are in the right place, most definitely, and you have vision. And I mean, vision is everything, absolutely yeah. everything. So thank you so much for your heart and your passion and for caring so much about Black Evanston and putting in all this work and legwork with the reparations. Thank you so much. And um, stay tuned, I'm gonna have you guys back. <laughs> thank you, thank you so right. much for having me. All right, Andona, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day.
You too. This has been Malika, Evanston Live TV. You all stay tuned for more. Uh, they have an awesome page. You guys, you know, check it out. Um, it's always just good to hear voices in Evanston that have vision, they have a plan. And, um, you know, whether you agree with their vision or not, it's just awesome to be around people who are doing things like taking action. I love it. Absolutely love it. So you guys stay tuned. Thank you for supporting Evanston Live TV. Stay tuned for more amazing voices, more amazing people doing amazing things in Evanston. All right. And be sure you stick to them guidelines, six feet distance, wash your hands and people wear your mask, wear your mask, please take your shoes off at your front door. Do not track COVID-19 into your house and be conscious and be aware. It's a lot going on right now. And um, you all just be careful out there.